pero que está organizada por la Sociedad Catalana de Historia de la Ciencia y de la, y de la Técnica. Van a ser tres conferencias, una por mes. Eh, hoy es la primera y van por orden cronológico de la Edad Media a, a, la, época, a la época contemporánea. Eh, la conferencia de hoy la dará Anemique Ferbón. Uh, bienvenido, Anemique. Uh, eh, que, es, uh, que es holandesa de origen, pero que trabaja en, uh, que trabaja en Francia, en un grupo postdoctoranta en un grupo de antropología escolástica, en la École de Études en Sciences Sociales, y eh, que ha uh, trabajado sobre eh, la historia de los diagramas del cerebro y del alma uh, eh, en manuscritos medievales y en manuales eh, universitarios, universitarios de la Edad Media, eh, es un interés, con un interés particular por las relaciones conceptuales y visuales entre teorías fisiológicas y teorías del alma durante la Edad Media y el Renacimiento, y eh, es de este tema que nos va a hablar hoy. Uh, va a hablar en inglés, despacio, love me, eh, eh, bienvenido. would not come to you as a surprise. It is considered to be the key of understanding of cognition, behavior, and even our individuality. It is, um, however, the brain has not always been the crown of creation. For a long time, the brain was considered secondary, secondary to the heart, secondary to the soul. For Aristotle, the brain did not explain the psychic functions. He explains cognition as a faculty of the soul. Some ancient philosophers, however, do address more importance to the brain, but it still took a real philosophical and scientific revolution to arrive at the idea that the brain is the key to understanding the psyche. I am working on the historical origins of the concept of the brain as key to the psyche. What's new? Well, in the existing literature, historians of medicine and science um, have often reduced the history of the brain to the history of the corporeality of that specific body part. They start our investigation with Vesalius, Harvey, Willis, when, and I quote, cerebral hemispheres and cranial nerves began to take precedence over the role of spirit, passion, and the heart in human thought and behavior, end of quote. This is a quote from Martinson in his book, The Brain Takes Shape, An Early History. Starting with the advent of 16th century anatomy, Historians of philosophy, on the other hand, prefer to focus on the intellect and on the other faculties of the soul rather than its physical substrate. So we have the curious situation that the medical tradition reduced this man to his body and the philosopher reduced it to its governing principle. And both detach the organic soul from the scientific soul. Now, that distortion is caused by our disciplinary boundaries, and it doesn't consist of an elite tradition. Even if in the Middle Ages, um, philosophy, theology, and medicine are clearly combined branches, they all have a common trunk in common. To read each other's books. And then we have to know about theology and we have to know about medicine when we're doing an introductory philosophy and vice versa. Um, I am looking, therefore, for the origins of the concept of the brain in medieval controversies about body, soul, mind, spirit. And that at the intersection of philosophy and medicine and theology. I try to understand how philosophers and physicians explored the inner corporeal spaces and how 
how they have prepared the ground for thinking of the brain as a potentially important outcome. How do we do that? Well, by reading legal letter management. And at the moment, I am mainly working with manuals. And manuals are the handbooks, student handbooks, uh, mainly in the 14th, 15th century. And they are interesting for several reasons. Uh, one is that they are uh, comprehensive surveys of the legal uh, consensus, even if all manuals might give a different consensus, they are still uh, a summary of trying to put it together in a clear way to convey to students. But as with all other reason, there's, by the way, a very clear professional leadership these manuals were used more than a century just and in those cases educating generations and generations of students so these is the consensus or the general overview that the majority of the students knew they were supposed to know that they used and a third reason and that is why it's especially can learn us and show how uh, legal men students or for example students imagined the relation of the same being to the body. There are also complex sources because we're dealing with student papers, uh, scribbles or scraps or parchment or margins or of the manuscript, not always close to the text it needs to comment on. So um, our students not always tend to be very orderly or very comprehensively over uh, student legal notes, handbook notes. Um, I will structure my talk in three parts. A short overview. In the first part, it prepares the way to understand how mental functions can be in the brain. And that is then the second part. And in a third part, those both parts I will try to illustrate uh, with images I know. Um, but in that way, I use these images as a, in a way my story. And the last... to inverse the focus and to look at what the diagrams do and what they show rather than what I'm talking about the philosophies. So there are sort of three parts which in two parts together with the third part then of the inverse focus. Okay, first part about the soul. Here we see a picture of the powers this is a diagram made by a 15th century student from his notebook of manuscripts in which he gathered facts of Aristotle, um, Animal, Plato, Platone, uh, physics, uh, many commentaries, uh, Pitomele, who is a uh, uh, <coughs> survey and manual, uh, a question series that uh, discusses specific problems in the text. probably followed a model presented to him by his professor and I think that he did because I thought more of this diagrams had the same common symbol indicating that there is uh, a common trunk and how it exactly fits in together I'm not quite sure but I will show one more image that you will recognize that it is similar that it represents the same context we are at the University of Leipzig in the 1480s 
do we see? Well, we see a curve, probably a man from his waistline onwards, head in a profile, a big broad profile, with some ornately body part. Um, and we see extreme senses, nose, eyes, ears, and we see in the gray area kind of a window open here with geometrical curves, as you can see it now. And above we have the surface hovering. If we want to understand it more, we have to start reading it. And words there are many. Um, I think it was to navigate to the Philosophical psychology would know rather quickly if we are here in a diagram about the powers of the soul at work in a living body. Even, and I still find this rather curious, the word soul is not mentioned once in the literature. That brings us to the first point, because what is the soul anyway? Well, there is obviously not one definition, but the most influential was perhaps the one of Aristotle, who presented in the Anima, which was next available to the Latin edition of the 12th century, the definition as follows. The soul is the act of a natural body with the capacity for life. So for Aristotle, the soul was something very different than our elusive concept the soul is a constitutive element for living. It's what it distinguishes from non-living. And he distinguished in the soul three parts, three souls for the living beings, the animated beings. There is a vegetative soul, a substance that acts on basic functions. Basic functions as metabolism, as reproduction. And all sensitive part and the sensitive part of the soul is responsible for sensorial perception and locomotion and passions and then the intellectual soul capable of reasoning is reserved for men so whereas Plato had the tendency of reducing man to his soul Aristotle insisted on the unity is that Aristotle also wrote that the intellective soul is separate. So we could think about the, uh, the, the capacity for mind. And these separate parts, this separate intellect, separate part of the soul, became a lot of trouble. Now the philosopher Avicenna, who tried
tried to shore it out um, was the first of a, a comprehensive survey of Aristotle of Delhi and organized a system of trying to localize and bring powers in the body. And these discussions in the Middle Ages about the soul were for a large part conditioned by these traditions, the Judeo tradition, the Islamic tradition, and the belief system developed by Abu Jahl. So, in that case, the soul is at the same time the sublimation as the form of the body. So the human soul is a material invisible. It is interior within the body of a living man. And she presents matter for certain operations, but for other operations, it needs the body. The human body is not invisible. We see it through the body. Vegetable heart has a physical, <laughs> physiological basis in the liver. Metabolism, reproduction. Sensitive parts have a physical base in the brain. Only the intellectual part is not localized in any organ, any physical organ, and it's hovering above the head because it is immaterial, the bustle. That's why I put it outside the head, that we should not consider it as being outside the head because it is in the body, everywhere, without a specific location and immaterial. So here we feel a first difficulty in visualizing the soul, the power of the soul, without localization. We see the difficulty of the nature of the intellect. So for medieval readers, digestion, growing, reproduction, local movement, emotions, sensorial perceptions, they were all corporeal processes based that is why this picture shows statements of the soul, how the soul does and does not behave. Now, at the background of this ontological problem are theologic, theological discussions. There are two doctrines, two theological necessities that have directed the question about the soul and the body. First, is the necessity to protect the unity of man. The <coughs> unity of man is constituted by the soul because it has faith in the resurrection of the flesh. It has faith in the incarnation of God in man and of the process of the soul, which is not exactly the same as the cosmic nature of the soul, is defining man in contrast to angels and soul, man must be separated by certain rules. So that is one cluster to protect the unity of man. And the other theological doctrine is about the attitude of the soul, immortality or immaculacy. And this second doctrine, doctrine has the tendency to cut the soul off from the terrestrial body. And so contradicting each other some theological problem that it raises. Now there were solutions at hand and the solutions were both found in um, intermediate philosophy, in material dispositions between this immaterial 
rational soul and the body. For one, there are the spirits, the galima, galima spirits which are physical, material, but so light that it is almost spiritual, and therefore making a connection between the body and the soul. And another solution is found and used exactly by the Sagittarius Ascendancy Cross. The Sagittarius part being composite the material, composite the corruptible, resembles more the body than the rational part in the sense that the material is simple but still corruptible is slightly more spiritual than the vegetative part but even less or more material than the rational part. So there's a hierarchy between these different parts trying to, to make a junction between the body and the soul. Our image confirmed both strategies even to a lesser extent to Pamela, but it talks about the spirits that are pushed around through these veils, connecting vital spirits in the vegetative part, becoming animal spirits in the animated and the sensical part. And there is clearly this tripartite structure of the vegetative senses and the sensical part of the soul. And together they form this unity of the man as the ultimate object, objective. But we can also here and see the first crack in the Ar Aristotelian science of the soul, that this physical man forms a unit of study on its own, shared by physicists, physicians, and natural philosophers alike. And the spiritual side, which is hovering above his head, is going to be left is metaphysical, going to be left to the theologians and later to the psychologists. Now, in the Middle Ages, they are very conscious of the fragility, the brittleness of the science of the soul as a natural philosophical program. And they try anything to keep the entire soul within the union with the body and thus to keep also the study of the soul within the Christian sphere. Now let's leave this ontological discussion of the soul and the image and maybe into the metaphysical soul, notably the sensical soul, on this day. This is um, a similar picture in the same tradition from the Bodleian Scriptures of Instead of the hammock of the bush, we see the retreat of the physical uh, part, which indicates the physical part, even if there is a tear on the other side. London, my dear friends, we are still at the University of Leipzig in Nature of Buffalo, so we can come to this soon in lecture. The sensical soul is about sense perception, as I said before. External and internal sense uh, organs. It's about abstraction of particulare. It's about abstracting sensations from the external world by means of the uh, sense organs sensations come in, there's an object that emits images, it's the Galima Nadir, transporting it by air or water, arriving, for example, at my eye, there it enters in my eye in the crystalline, and it is gathered there by the spirit, animated spirits, I mean, I will turn my spirits, and then it is transported within the mud that where the lines come in, the lines between the, the sense organs towards the first knots in the front, the common sense. There all the sensations are gathered. Now common sense is not an English common sense how we used to do it. The common sense is more of a general sense that is captured, the 
different sensation and making a new image of the species based on it because it receives yellow and sticky and sweet making that taste an element but i will look at it in a little bit more time and um, so the the common sense can be understood as an interface between external and internal senses now it is written in these texts around the head that the common sense is a liquid organ not capable therefore of retention so we have here a physical characteristic of a mental function also it is placed in the front ventricle because it is in the case closer to the external senses also it is in the brain rather than in the heart not in the common sense at all the same place because all muscles are good that is where physicians would intervene to act upon them to repair them to restore them to help out in the front ventricle is also a second sense the imagination which is quite of nature and the primus makes what the imaginary faculty retains the organ well what does it retain forms images of the object not perceptible anymore that what it receives through the common sense then there is in the third node above fantasy if the epigenome postulated epigenome postulated is a separate composite imagination um, which is rather controversial but here accepted capable of forming and refining and composing new images of recent perceptions as well as stored perceptions the fourth and the fourth nut is uh, estimation also called coaptation which works with intentions that are not intentions which are not our intentions that are uh, things present in sense objects that things we cannot perceive readily like hostility or friendship <coughs> it's often translated as a sort of practical intellect for animals um, here it is for example placed on top of the head uh, the utmost uh, cell for a reason because estimation is a kind of pre-intellectual sense it's the most spiritual is not the word it's it's capable of the better abstraction than the others and therefore it is on top of the head so it's higher and closer to the intellect higher and closer than the head above um, and the third here in the back of the head is memory an organ dry in nature again so that it preserves very well by the way here is the narrowing door core cell following another order another scheme and also a little bit of the traditional scheme, traditional scheme of epigenome and coaptation now there are also the pyramid pyramids and you can see it in the form of also on top <coughs> this is also about a thousand or so i put it here because there is an indication or a small description in the bottom of the page explaining what this pyramid is all about it is the point of the pyramid it explains is where the perception is received from the organ is penetrating physically to get an idea or an image into an organ we see in this image Thank you. 
an impact and all had elements come in penetration of trans transporting elements and penetration of these elements and i say that because it indicates how the sensitive powers really are in the brain how do these powers address the brain note that the brain is considered essentially The brain is considered to be essentially inventors. They are not interested in brain tissue. There are some pictures of brain tissue, but in general, what the powers, the functions are in the sensitive nucleus, which are the organs, and the organs are filled with animal spirits that help to communicate and transport between the different parts. Now, these ventricles have a specific confection. They're dry, they're liquid. Uh, that makes the powers have a physical reason to be here rather than there. And the localization, the sense of function, common sense, um, is in the front because it's close to the sensor organs, occupation on top, etc. And we've talked about this a little bit in the patient, but I think that's good to explain how these powers, how they relate physically. In either case, what is not in the brain is the intellect and it's the will. For the intellect has no physical seat and it does not work with sense perception. Well, not with particularia, not, nothing with the contingent world. The intellect is about universalia, it's about abstract concepts, it's about higher truth, it's about mathematical axioma. There is nonetheless a relation between the intellectual self intellectual operations were considered since Aristotle only possible with the presence of mental images of ultimately derived from sense perception. That is what Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas formulated as the theory of turning to fantasy. And phantasmata, they are special because they are more than perceptions. Combine past and present perceptions from the memories, um, and therefore it is located in the brain, and rational thinking was not in the brain, distinct from the body, and disturbances in rational thinking then could still be explained as brain damage, because it's a problem in the fantasy, without affecting any intellectual immaterial self. Let's inverse our regard and depart not from philosophy, but from the diagrams. I have some reflections about that. A diagram is a visual representation and words composed of both. Now the words, these words de describe um, visualized items like spleen, like taste, like heart, like these are more or less superfluous words for anyone who is familiar with sounding apparatus. Um, it can be left out if you know sound that is apparently an apparent and true and not um, where the heart is. There are also words that seem essential, but words that cannot be left out. Abstract concepts, in particular, one is labeled common sense, the other is labeled fantasy. We need the label to understand what we're talking about because otherwise we can make the difference between the two if it's not for the words. So the labels are a main tool for identifying what we see. One needs to be guided understand what one sees. With other words, the picture does not speak for itself as an afterthought. At the other hand, whereas the text is linear, the images and diagrams are not. They are two-dimensional. 
one would, one could go in either direction, allowing to approach the matter from another perspective. I have chosen to start this discussion with uh, a rather soul uh, exposition, then to continue with the three parts of the soul, starting with the vegetative power, and then working up my way until we come to the power of the soul, in a sort of embracing a hierarchy from matter to more and more spiritual, from particulars to universals. In fact, that is the order of the text, I suppose. It shows how conditioned I am to start with. By reading these texts and these texts, and I guess many medieval students would have the same. So, even if we can approach it from any direction, I guess we do not always do it that, but it can be done the other way. I can isolate aspects. For example, I can isolate the sensations and the sense perceptions and see one more example, which I will give. Many stories can be told on the basis of these pictures. one, for example, uh, how is the soul in the body? Is the soul one or is the soul three? How is the soul united? Where are the powers located? Uh, based on the different interrogations of text and image, you can have several stories. Um, yes, I'm getting to that point. Reflection number two. Does the image relate to the object of the image? This is a diagram, which means that it's ordering the concept philosophically, visually. It's an abstract visualization of a complex structure. The picture is not materialistic. Even if it is figurative, because we recognize a man. However, the fact that it is not a materialistic image, it's a diagram, does not necessarily mean that there is no physical reality to it. As we've seen, common sense is in the first century to be the first to receive these sensations. Cogitation is on thought. The organs are real. Their localization is real even if the form is approximative, even for the observers. Nonetheless, these diagrams are not an object for anatomy. These are natural philosophy diagrams. Even if some of these were inserted in a medical text, which I think points out the interdisciplinarity of medieval intellectuals. So, as it's not an object of anatomy, we cannot talk about observation, we cannot talk about artistic observation or about scientific observation. The pictures, in a sense, go beyond observation. They go straight to the essential structure. Also, these diagrams are not illustrations. That is not something you can see on the receipt. It is not something you can say on basis of the representation alone. I read the manuscript, I read the text, and I establish that it fits nowhere, literally. It's not illustrating a text. It is a paratext. It is a note. It is a discussion or a gloss, if you like. These images show, therefore, a physical and an intellectual autonomy. Physical because they are separated even physically from the text. They are visualized there where there's a spread of partial free. This example in particular shows that. All page dedicated to all kinds of notes and diagrams and scribbles and pen tools. 
cry out. There were feasts free because of paper in those days, some parchment, which is valuable in those ages, so you use every inch of it. They are discussions. They are thinking tools, organizers, summaries for students. Eerste a student notebooks. This image is particularly telling because it has Sike written in it. Sike, sensus communis unum collectiva, fantasia essentiva collectiva. We have the five eternal senses of the word, Sike, a mnemonic, mnemotechnic tool for students. <coughs> Reflection three, what about the relationship between imaging and thinking. Thinking as a scientific method or scientific argumentation. I find it is difficult to talk about scientific argumentation in Russian, mainly because it is difficult to translate verbal rules about what is valid and what is not valid visually. There are texts in the Netherlands, in the Roman Netherlands, about what valid reason and so on should be. But how do you translate that human? So, in either case, it's not a kind of Bruno Latourian marketing tool for laboratories theories of the printing press, they are before the printing press, the diagrams are for personal use, there are revision material for students, but every diagram is unique and has a unique manuscript context. Now, this diagram, the Würzburg manuscript, the Würzburg Gurian one, shows how the powers of the soul are at work in our own body. How the body and the location are powers. And how powers equal all others, except for the intellect. It shows the theological necessity of the unity of man, despite the ontological difficulties also so very clearly in this image. If it weren't for this, if it weren't for this, this physical uh, the physical substrate, this physical element, the diagram would be fixed. These are just powers and objects and a root map of direction without any bodily location, without organs. Here we lose the ontological problem. There is no problem here because we have no bodily localization. So in the diagram, the Würzburg diagram, there is a clear emphasis on the physical substrate of the powers of the soul, making clear that there are two different natures according to the image, and that this is powers, and in the Berlin example the same, coupled with the image, the physical plane, and also on top, three separate powers. Now, to wrap this up into a conclusion, the medieval pictures I showed were diagrams of vision and brain that are fed with it, used as an instrument by the powers of the soul, the sensitive part, sense perception. We haven't talked much about the locomotion and other aspects of the powers in this part. And excluded from the brain are the will and the intellect, which are higher than collective and material and original capacities, not physically brought down, but nonetheless confined to the body during man's life, using sense perception, 
talk about the investment of human instructions. Now, the soul is the principle behind the functioning of the body, but the soul is spiritual and not visible in the picture. I recall that the soul is not even mentioned in the entire picture. The picture then risks a mechanical interpretation. And indeed, we have this homophysicus, this apophysicum, indicating there is something like an organic soul, showing emphasis, increasing emphasis on the physical substance and physical processes. Maybe I should sketch as a kind of epilogue and a horrible anachronistic or teleological outlook into the future, if you permit me, because to wrap up up at the beginning, how does the brain become a subject of the intellect? This, of course, is a hardly expressible idea in the religions, because the soul is the ultimate subject. Now, what are the elements of such a scientific and philosophical revolution that makes it possible to have a brain as appealing to the psyche? Well, there are several explanations. I think the keyest one would be is a transition of a composite soul to a simple soul that would allow a direct cooperation between the sensitive and the neglected parts, a convergence of functions, integrating sensorial apprehension and intuition, are some indications in the medieval approach that we have done that far, but still we have discussed briefly the Edwardian fantasies and there are several more indications. Also, one that we have left to go, that's the second explanation, that one would have left to go of the soul as a governing principle, allowing the body to work on its own mechanically. So there are two explanations, explorations for
we're aiming especially on the brain area, as you can see. I think there is definitely a localization issue, especially in, um, the, in a census of highly debated uh, radiology. Are there three, four, five senses? And where are they localized? And what does it do? And etc. So everyone creates a standard question in every, every uh, treatment. That is an issue. Um, for the organs in the torso, um, that's not dealt with in the IME. That has another source, um, uh, pharmacal sources. Uh, but it is related <coughs> with the vegetative part of the soul. So yes, there is a causality question that it's not easy to pin down in this picture in the end because it's about the soul, but the soul we don't see. So the ultimate cause is for all parts the soul. But you can easily forget if you are careless or so. But then again, I mean, how would you visualize a soul? You cannot that so there is this mechanism behind and I think for every medieval student it, it was um, very clear that it is the soul but still I agree that things are shifting because you can read this rather mechanically because the soul is not even mentioned in the entire picture and that's exactly the point where does it go professor itself obviously it was his task to comment on the condition and he does so in this case the Prime Minister Emmanuel but of course it was the anima also the students were obliged to read the anima context Emmanuel was not the only source for the 
this necklace. So the professor is this, of course, the commented, the critic. Not every master was a genius. A lot of them repeated also standard arguments. What was also necessary to know for the student is standard questions with the standard refutations so that they can um, refute systematically all objections to get at a certain point. That was this strategy of uh, posing question and refuse, refu refutation, etc. Do the students themselves criticize their professors? Because that's the question. there are indications that they don't follow their master. But then their notes sometimes, most of the time, are very concise. So do I have the entire argumentation or only a part? Does he not agree or does he say something different because he understood something different? It's not always difficult. It's not always easy to decide. So they write the, the questions of their master with his refutation and his order. And then in between the lines, they amend, correct, explain in glasses and also the image itself is a summary which they amend. I have six of these images. They all come from the same lecture, but they're all different. Is that the student's interpretation? Is it because he didn't understand the model? They make mistakes, also this uh, horrible things. And how can I make a philosophy of that? So I'm, I'm not always sure whether they're just being incomprehensible. Is it me that doesn't understand? Because they have half sentences, concise notes. Do I read it well? Let's say I've never seen a very clear situation in which the student categorically says, my master is wrong. Yes, 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 it is, um, <coughs> well, um, you have to make differences between, uh, between the textual sources. Then there is a uh, question series, for example, is copied, um, has been written down and has been copied by the students on this model, and then they take it to their courses and then they amend it, they reparagonized it, they have small comments on it. So there are comments, and that is what I was talking, are the students' notes or comments uh, in their, that are directly in their manuscripts. So uh, uh, directly, uh, directly made during the courses of the authors. And so the images also can be amended because in most of these images you said, well, have is not doesn't say necessarily that there are different students. It were students also had different habits in the images. You have the official hand, then you have the note hand, then you have the whatever hand. So you have whatever hand you want. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes there's simply different students because these images are beautiful, is maybe not the word, but they are very handy and very appreciated. So if you cut a manuscript in pieces, you keep the image, you, you glue it in a new book, and then you write your new ideas in, in the picture. So that's what I was just trying to say about the three different Uh, there are many, uh, there are 
materiality of these images is where are they you mean where they are in the book or where they are where are they are in the book they are they are blue on the phone what are these books what are the printed books that they have got on the yeah well <coughs> page books on the on the they the images the majority of the signs in the book are there in diminished by value where there is series of your local malls so there's many ways and some of them you write one after the other it depends on uh, where you heard your lesson and the the space in the book that you have and otherwise because not only the local pages in the volume have been composed and written over a five six years and strewn them together over they had already at hand where there was enough space in the book so that's why I said that they are physically rather separate from their textual composition which makes it sometimes difficult to know to what it belongs now, I've <coughs> now I, I know my commentaries now I've brought it about so I know what they belong and what they include at the time you know some years 
if you know some sewers by name, you can find them in the list because it will bring you up um, with the right proof, which will be loud and uh, not in your name of course. Uh, which makes also that one of these things on this board is valid for the French cut and paste so that you can have manuscript English taken in different contexts. Now I'm only making this example to make you back that this context is only another English and I'm only the black one but you can reconstruct this in your own way. Um, printed images Many of them are rather more uh, visual. This is more the standard type. Um, and the larger one is an elaboration, um, which is also done with far less artwork. And it's printed as many more in a concrete form than you may do in a big manual language or if you would like to use an aircraft somewhat longer line it's a very European simple European thing this elaborated version of uh, the image um, so there is definitely um, a continuity between in, in the iconographic representation of the most powerful souls of the French and what happened in the uh, printed version. Um, I will name some of these for you. Le Carnage, uh, something else, the Carnage, the French Carnage, which in fact doesn't um, go very well with the text. It's not, it, it's a different, does different things because it's an image that wasn't really at hand in the sculpture atelier uh, it was an image that has al had already been used with other other printed texts uh, recited and deciphered which is this iconographic uh, goes in different issues with it now to try to get further in what happens in these images um, yes does it do evidentially it is not all representation and 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 that is very clear one of the stories on the second hand is not that very easy to write just besides you all one should definitely not understand is that there is outside of the body because that is adhering to an evidence idea which is not contested and followed but also contested and so this student is very keen 